Okay, in this video, we're going to talk through some things from the titration lab on page 19 in case you have any questions about this. And remember, you can always send me questions over chat as well. So what we should have collected in class is we should have a we should have some volumes written down in our data table. So I'm just going to put some, you know, fake numbers in here. These numbers won't match what yours were, but we're going to have a volume of an acid. So like, let's say in my first trial, I use six milliliters of acid. And then you're going to have an initial and a final volume of base from your burette. And the way that your burette works is the volume starts um, low because when your burette is filled up to the top, this is the reading says zero and then the lowest reading down there is says 50. So both these numbers should be somewhere between zero and 50. Uh, and then we're figure out how much base it took. Let's say it took um, 26 milliliters. Again, I'm just making these numbers up just for an example. So the what you first want to do is figure out the average volume of acid used from each of your trials. And this is because you had several trials or you might have different volumes here. So maybe this case is like two and this one is like um, 24, again, making up some fake numbers. So the average volume of acid, you just add up your, you know, acid um, volumes and divide it by however many trials you did. So many of us did two trials, you probably have two numbers, you're going to add up and divide by two to get your average volume of acid. Um, your average volume of base, the way that you find your volume of the base from the burette is you subtract these two values right here. So like in my first trial, the volume of base added in my first trial was 26 minus 1. So it looks like I added 25 milliliters of base in my first trial. And then in my second trial, um, it ended at 24. It started at 2. So it looks like I added 22 milliliters. And then I'm going to add these numbers up and divide them by 2 to get the average. Right? So that's going to give me my average. Again, your numbers will be different. This is just an example. Okay. So now let's um, figure out how many moles of base we added. So we know that the solution in the burette is 0.1 molar NaOH. Why? Because I made the solution and I measured it and I told you it's 0.1 molar NaOH. So that is our known solution. And remember in titration, what we're doing here is we are adding a, sorry for this lovely picture here, um, is we're adding a solution of known concentration so your known solution, that is in the urette. So in this case, that was our base, our sodium hydroxide. And then in the flask um, was our unknown. And in this case, our unknown was the acid. That was the H3PO4. That is the thing that we don't know the concentration of. So this one we know is 0.1 molar. Um, the acid, we don't know what its concentration is. That's what we're trying to find. All right. So... Back to our steps in the calculation here. Um, the first step to figure out how much acid we have is to figure out how much base it took to neutralize the acid. So what we know is it took this volume. So let me actually stop and solve for this. So 25 plus 22 um, divided by 2. Uh, it's like 23.5 milliliters is my average volume of base. So we know it took 23.5 milliliters, uh, 0.1 molar NaOH, um, to neutralize our H3PO4. Okay, so first, so let's what we're gonna do is let's figure out how many moles that is. So we know that molarity is moles per liter, and we can rearrange this equation and say moles is molarity times liters. So if I'm asked to find moles, what I should do is take my molarity times my liters. So in this case, my molarity is 0.1 molar. And my volume is this volume right here. Make sure I'm using the volume of base. So this is 20, this is 23.5 milliliters of NaOH. Okay. Um, and I'm going to convert that into liters. There we go. And so that's going to give me my uh, volume of, sorry, my moles of base. So it looks like it took 0 0.00235 moles of NaOH to neutralize my acid. Okay. Cool. Well, how does that relate to my acid? Because I found moles of base. How am I going to find moles of acid? Well, earlier on in the pre-lab, we should have written a balanced chemical equation for the neutralization reaction between H3PO4 and sodium hydroxide. 
So let's scroll down and take a look at this one. So we've got um, H3PO4 and we've got sodium hydroxide. So what they're going to do is we know they're going to form water. So the hydroxide and the hydrogen are combined to form water. And the elements that are left, the sodium and the phosphate, they're going to come together to form an ionic compound. And uh, sodium, if we look up on our periodic table, it's got a charge of plus one. Phosphate, that's one of those polyatomic ions we learned um, in one of our units first semester. And it's got a charge of negative three, that is phosphate. And so in order to uh, um, write this chemical formula, I need the charges to add it to zero. So remember we do this crisscross thing where this number goes down here, this number goes down here. So the formula is going to end up being Na3PO4. And then now I've got to balance it. I need three sodiums and I end up needing a three over here. So this equation ends up being balanced if you stop and count all the atoms on the left and the right. All right, and then how does that help us? Well, remember we're trying to find how much acid was in our flask. That is what the question is. How much acid was in our flask? And we know how much base it took to neutralize the acid. So um, it took 0 0.00235 moles of base to neutralize the acid. And now we know the ratio in which they react. It looks like for every three NaOHs that react, we um, will react one H3PO4. So that's a one to three you know, ratio here. So you end up with one, two, three, seven, eight. Um, so that is how many moles of acid that were in the container. And then we see one more step to find molarity. So we take our moles divided by our liters gives us the molarity. Make sure you choose the right volume. So if you look back at your table, we've got several, you know, volume readings. So for this last step, we want to make sure we're using the volume of the acid. Okay. And you found the average volume of the acid up here um, in step one. So um, turns out this is 5.75 milliliters, FYI. So you would use your answer from that first, this would be your answer from number one, uh, which in this case would be 5.75 milliliters. Although I want to convert it into liters, right? That's what we always want to do. So remember to convert from milliliters to liters, you divide it by a thousand. Um, so you take your moles of acid divided by your liters of acid and that will give you molarity. And again, remember these are fake numbers that I made up, your numbers are going to look different based on whatever your data is. So this is just a model for you to look at. And please send me a message if you have questions.